my father here got some intel that some of the guys that work for uh, Shug was planning on kidnapping and robbing him. <laughs> Later found out Bob James was one of them <laughs> on the Vlad interview. He never told me that. Learned that on Vlad. And so uh, got the information, took it to Shug. And um, long story short, he uh, asked me and my father to come over there and start working for, for him. Dad, he denied it, told him he had no interest, uh, but I did. And so uh, myself and another lieutenant uh, started working for him with, our, with a security company uh, on a consulting basis, just on a consulting basis and a little bodyguard work here and there. And then it just grew and grew and grew. I eventually opened up my own private security company, Right Way Protective Services, and got that established. And now you're working more and more, and the company's growing. The company's getting bigger and bigger. Um, Snoop, Dre, and Tupac uh, eventually needed some bodyguards daily. And um, yeah, yeah, grew from there. What did uh, Compton PD think of you? messing around doing security work on the side? At first they were all for it. They were cool with it. Until the FBI showed up to the police chief office one day and was like, hey, we noticed you got a bunch of your officers. We had about five or six of us that's working for with the rap guys, you know, the, the, the bad guys, the black guys. <laughs> you know, they working for the guys and what's up with this? Why, you know, every everywhere we go, well, we usually have them on something. We see the badges coming out and getting them all in trouble. Hey, we're trying to get them on something, you know. Could you have your guys stop working for them? And so the police chief told us, he ordered us. Yeah, he pulled our work permits because you had the permits that you had to fill out and let them know. And um, he said, hey, y'all work permits is no longer good. And most of us, most of the cops are uh, abide by it. But me? 27, 28, think I know everything, hard-headed. Hey, these are my friends, these guys I grew up with. I don't tell you who you can off-duty, who you can hang out with and, and be around. Can't tell me. I play football with this boy. I've been going to school with him since I'm in elementary school. Plus, I'm making good money. <laughs> I'm like, no. Wow. There was a little bit of you saying, I'm, I, I want to get out of here anyways. Well, I uh, didn't really want to. I thought I did, but that wasn't my plan. What prompted that was uh, I was having it hard. Uh, had a, a bank robbery situation where the guys robbed the armor truck. I remember over uh, over behind uh, Culver, off of 1300 block of North Culver. And we went chasing him. You know, I ain't chased nobody, but you know, we found the guys and caught the guys that and had a big containment set up. And I was the handling officer where the guys had just uh, robbed the armored truck. And so I was on my feet for about four hours that day, just constant on my feet. You know, because a lot of the times being in police work, you said. I used to call ourselves we secretary on wheels because all we're doing is driving around to people's houses or whatever, taking police, you know, taking reports. But that day was on my my feet for about five or six hours. You got your boot tied and your shoe tied, Art. Okay. I took that boot off when I came came home. Luckily, that was the day before my day off. Couldn't walk for two days. My ankle was swollen. I. I couldn't put no pressure on my foot and anything. So that's realized, That's when I realized I can't do this job no more. So by this time, you're seeing Suge over there. They already put out Snoop. That was 92. They already put out The Chronic. Well, right? your date's a little wrong. But, and yeah, well, if you talk about D-Cover. They, they put out Snoop and Dre already. You're a chronic, the Chronic. The Chronic. Yeah. And you're like, I'm sure you're like, damn. They're yeah. Blowing I'm up proud of them. I'm happy for them. But I ain't really knowing. Never been... Never realized they were that rich. Ain't no one. But Suge's now got some of the hottest artists in the artists in America. Well, who knew Suge then? 
You knew Shug. I knew Shug, <laughs> but who knew Shug as the man behind these guys? One thing you knew was Drake and Snoop. You didn't know about Suge Knight too much. Suge Knight was in the background there. Biggest mistake is when it became Suge Knight and Death Row. When it was just Death Row, it was all right. It became Suge Knight and Death Row. That's no, when the problem started. He was definitely the public face of Bad Boy. Yeah. He wasn't behind the scenes. And Suge wasn't in 92, 93, 94. It wasn't until 95, 96 when people started. That's why Suge caught this case study, one of his cases. Because the dudes was like, who are you? This Dre shit. We got to listen to you. We ain't getting off no phones. Dr. Dre ain't told us to get off no phones. He was like, what? Wait right here. I'll be right back. We'll get his gun. And go on, you know, the Stanley Brothers. You never heard of the Stanley Brothers. So the Stanley Brothers didn't even know who Shook was. They didn't know. They was like, this is Dre shit. <laughs> who are you? But they got a guy that's six feet four, 300 pounds. They were big guys. And there's two of them. We from New York. You know how you New York dudes are? Y'all tough everywhere. Y'all don't realize there's a gangster in every city. There's a motherfucker right here in Corona, California you don't fuck with. Excuse me. But that was a big mistake, though, at the end of the day. Yeah. Because that gave him his parole. Well, probation violation. That, was, that contributed to what happened in Vegas. If that never happened, he would have never went to jail for, never. for that one case. Well, he might have went to jail for assault and battery. Oh, yeah. What's that, a year? Yeah, if that. Six months? Yeah, if that. He, he Shit, he had... The best attorney in Vegas at the time, David Chesnow. What do you think compels Suge to think this is a good idea? I'm going to go in my car, get a strap, and come back here and, and tell It was a me. lesson. And because I got to show my, who I am. That was the, the, that was the key word right there. That was the trigger word right there. That's like me going to Gangster Chronicle. That's my shit. I don't know who Alex and James is. Mason Conical is me. And I'm saying and somebody saying that to you and Jane. Y'all be like, what? Hold on. Wait a minute. And, and that was the trigger word. It wasn't even about anything else. It was because he devalued him. And now I gotta show you who I am. I'm kinda glad it happened. Because now knowing how deep the feds was following our asses, we would have been in jail for something else. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Like and comment below to give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related videos to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description and listen to our weekly podcast, The Gangster Chronicles, every Thursday. And thanks for watching StreetTV.net.